Scholars of Swift. It's Prof G, and I'm gonna quickly demonstrate a few more concepts. Setting our button style, we'll learn to work with stacks within stacks, and we'll add an H stack in our V stack so that we can put two buttons in there side by side. And I'll show you how to use the spacer view. We'll have a couple of challenges along the way, and we'll be ready for a larger challenge in the next lesson. Let us hack. So by the end of the last lesson, we had this simple app with a large system image of a Swift in orange, a text view that states, I am a programmer in large title font in ultralight font weight, and we added a button. Click it, and it changes the text view to read awesome. Now our button is pretty basic, pretty mid as the hipster youngsters say. So let's change the button style. Now remember to modify a view, we add modifiers. They go just below the view statement. They start with a period. So after the closing curly of the buttons action, I'm gonna press return and on this new line, I'll enter dot and I'll enter the word button. Now look at this, Xcode shows us several options for modifiers for the button. We want this one called button style. So use your up or down arrow keys to highlight this. And code completion says this sets the style for the buttons within this view. That's what we want to do. If we look between the parentheses, we see that this wants input between those parens as something called a primitive button style. Now at this stage, we don't know what that is, but we do know that Xcode helps us out. And if we press a period, it will show us all of the predefined styles of that type. So first let's press return to accept the button style modifier and then period to show us the various styles. We see several options in here in iOS, both automatic and borderless produce the plain tinted button that we see here. You can try out dot bordered. This shows a button with a gray border, but let's try dot bordered prominent and that's even nicer. So again, feel free to get back in here after the lesson and experiment with the different styles. But now let me give you a quick challenge. You might take a look at this button and say, hey, the font is kind of small. I would like a bigger font. Why don't you change the font to title two? And you should know how to do this. Why don't you pause the video? I bet you can do it. And when you're ready, why don't you resume? and we'll compare answers. So this is what I was expecting. Below the button style modifier, we add a new line. We'll press dot. Remember the modifier to change the font is dot font. And in between its parentheses, we're just gonna pass in the value dot title two. And look at that, that makes the button a little bit larger. Very cool. Now let's change the color of the button. We'll riz it up as the youngsters say. My daughter would be mortified to hear me say that. Now you might think that we could use the foreground style modifier that we used up here, but when we wanna change the color for interactive items, meaning items that you can click on like buttons, we use a different modifier. It's called dot tint. So let's enter that in the line below. Code completion says dot tint will set the tint color for the view. That's what we want. It takes a color, cool, press return to accept this. Between the parentheses, we'll enter another dot. We see Xcode will allow us to scroll through a bunch of predefined colors. And why don't we make this orange as well? Nice. Now next, I wanna show you that you can enter stacks within stacks. So as we mentioned in an earlier lesson, the VStack is enclosing all of the other views in our app. These three views, the image, the text view, and the button view are vertically stacked one on top of another. Now, when we create a screen like we're doing in our body view here, we wanna make sure that there is a single outermost enclosing view for all of the other views in our app. Now it is possible to create an app with just one view, like an image view, but an app with just an image view wouldn't be a very cool app. So we see our app has one enclosing view, that's the VStack that we see here with the other three views inside of it. This is great, but we can put a stack inside of an existing stack. And why don't we do this to put a second button just to the right of our first button. So to do this, I'm gonna add an H stack that surrounds the current button and a new button that we'll create after this. Now, right here above the button, I could type H stack with a beginning curly brace and put the closing curly brace after the button. But Xcode also offers us a shortcut to embed a single view into an H stack. Just right click on the keyword for the view that you wanna embed in the stack. So I'm gonna do that right here for button, a quick action menu menu pops up. There are a bunch of different options in here, including several for embedding. I'm gonna select embed in H stack. And look at that. There's an H stack around our single button. Now we don't notice anything change in the preview because we're stacking only one item, so we don't see any change. Before we add a second button inside this H stack, I wanna point out that a quirk in the version of Xcode that I'm using didn't indent this last modifier, my tint modifier. Now my code's still going to work, so the indentation isn't vital. It's not gonna break your code in Swift. 
It will do that in a language like Python, but Swift knows better. But it's a good idea to keep your stuff formatted in a logical way, with items, for example, indented inside of any closures. So here's a pro tip, and I really recommend that all my students memorize this and periodically use this pro tip to reformat their code to make sure everything is nicely formatted. All you need to do is to press Command A to highlight all of your text, and then Control I to fix any indentation. So say it like a mantra. Command A, Control I, Command A, Control I. So let's do that. Command A, you can see everything is highlighted, and Control I, and that reformats everything. This is looking good. Xcode might scroll you around a little bit, but we can see the tint is now properly indented. Nice. So now that we've created an H stack and we've got our button inside of it, here's another quick challenge. Add a second button inside this H stack so that it shows up to the right of the first button. Change the first button so that it has the title awesome. And when you click it, it changes the message in our text view to awesome. And the second button should have the title great. And when you click it, our text view should read great. The two buttons should have the same format as the click me button. So why don't you pause, give this a shot. You totally can do it. I believe in you. And when you're done, press resume and we'll compare answers. So what I'm going to do first is to change the title string on my first button from click me to awesome. And I could retype all of this code down below, but since my code for my second button is almost identical to my first button, I'm going to save myself a few steps. I'm going to highlight the button view and all three of its modifiers. Make sure you don't highlight the close and curly brace. That's for the H stack, not for the button. And I'll copy this with a command C and I'll add a couple of blank lines below the tint modifier for the first button and I'll paste with command V and the second button is in here. I can see it showing up in the preview. Now in this second button, I'm going to change its title from awesome to great. And in the action between the curlies, I'm going to change the string. So instead of setting message equal to awesome, I'm going to set the message variable equal to great. And look at our preview. We've got these two buttons looking lovely side by side. Click awesome. The text changes to awesome. Click great. The text changes to great. Dynamite. By the way, another pro tip. Since the H stack has two buttons and they have identical modifiers that are applying to both of these buttons, one thing we can do is we can cut out these three modifiers and we can paste them below the H stack. So I'm going to highlight the three modifiers below this button, Command X to cut them out. I'm also going to delete the three modifiers below our other button. Now we see the two buttons look plain, but if I click just after the curly that encloses the H stack, press return and Command V to paste in those three modifiers, look at this. Since both buttons are inside the curly braces of the H stack, these three modifiers apply to both buttons inside. Nice. Now to finish up this lesson, I'm going to show you the spacer view. What the spacer view does is it adds as much blank space as it can between views. So for example, if I want to push my image and text to the top and the H stack with the buttons to the bottom, I can just add a spacer in here just above the H stack. I type in S P A C E R. I'm going to select this option with the open and close parens. For some reason, my Xcode doesn't offer a description, but press return and let's see what this does. Spacer has two parens. We didn't put anything inside of it, but look what it did. It pushes everything above above the spacer, up, and everything below the spacer, down. Now what if you want to keep that H stack along the bottom, but you want to put the image and the text in the middle? Well, what we can do is we can add a second spacer. Just after the V stack starts and before the image view, we'll type in another spacer with open and close parens. And look at this, it pushed the image and the text into the center. So what happens here is if we have two spacers, each of those spacers takes up half of the available space. Since one spacer is at the top of the V stack, it pushes everything below it down. And since the other spacer is after the text and before the H stack, it will push the H stack with the buttons to the bottom, but but everything above it, the image view and the text view, upward. And since the image and text view is between two spacers, those are balanced in the middle of the screen. So again, you can experiment with this. You can put multiple spacers in there as well. Each spacer would then take up a third of the space available. And now, curious person that you are, you might wonder, hmm, what happens if I put a spacer in an H stack? Let's try it out. So in between our two buttons, why don't we put spacer in here, open and close parens, and ho ho, the two buttons are pushed out to the sides. So a spacer in a V stack pushes views vertically, spacers in an H stack 
pushes views horizontally. I think I like the buttons the other way, so I'm going to remove the spacer from the H stack. And this was a quick lesson. We had a couple of challenges in here. You learned about formatting a button style, about adding a stack within a stack, working with the spacer. Our next lesson will present you with a challenge where you create a new project and apply everything you've learned, and I'll show you the solution right after. I hope you feel like you're learning big. Continue to hack.